In a recent video of mine, I posted my Los Angeles travel guide, which showed you the must-visit attractions here in LA, if you're a tourist. In this video, I want to break down how to explore LA like a local, which arguably is the best way to explore any city. So if you've already been to LA or you want to experience more of the local culture here, is that rain? Okay, hold on, technical difficulty. You want to know something locals fear the most? The rain. Run as fast as you can into Trader Joe's, make sure the rain doesn't hit you, who knows what's in that LA air. First things first, grab the kale, quick before it runs out. Frozen meal, but make sure it's vegan. Almond milk, because do they even sell cow milk in LA? Ew. Bread? Wait, no, nobody eats bread in LA. Okay, fine. Quinoa, green juice, but make it too. Ooh, avocados. Wait, not organic, never mind. Okay, organic avocados. $6.99? Damn, California. Sneaking in the dark chocolate peanut butter cups? Shh. Okay, we're done. Okay, the sun is back out and the LA locals have survived. I think. Rain is so rare here and something usually only the locals have to face. So hopefully you won't have to deal with an LA apocalypse because that is not on my list today, or at least it wasn't supposed to be. Before we get started, this portion of the video is sponsored by Mott & Go, my new favorite company that sells premium clothing at an affordable price point and what I am wearing right now. Mott & Bo hooked me up with a new wardrobe and you can use discount code Michael for 10% off your first purchase so you can travel Los Angeles in style. I've never had a pair of jeans fit me so well. Thank you, Mott Bo. And if you're wondering where I am right now, I am in one of the coolest spots here in Los Angeles, which I'll get to in a second. But first, if you're not shopping at a Trader Joe's or Erwan, your next best option is a farmer's market because here in Los Angeles, they happen all throughout the week in different neighborhoods. And every Saturday, you can head over to the quirky and hipster neighborhood of Silver Lake. LA has many, many farmer's markets throughout the city during the week, so you definitely gotta try one out to have some of the best produce you've probably ever tasted. Unreal. If you didn't already know, California produces a majority of fruits and vegetables for the United States. It's a reason why farmer's markets are so popular in Los Angeles, because the produce is actually really good. For a trendy dining experience, check out Pink Taco on the Sunset Strip. It has a rock and roll vibe and influencers love it. Don't miss Jones on 3rd, which is an upscale fast casual restaurant and apparently a Kardashian favorite. For something more casual, Takaya Modern Mexican is my favorite healthier version of Chipotle or Creation Organic Juicery for the best smoothie or smoothie bowls in town. Want a snack? In Silver Lake and Venice, Blue Star Coffee and Donuts has some of the best donuts because did you know that donuts are raved about here on the West Coast? Not a donut fan? Check out Suzy Cakes Bakery for the best cupcakes and cake slices and where the frosting and batter are perfectly matched. Whenever I used to visit friends in LA before I moved, Suzy Cakes was always a stop. And now that we got some food, if you wanna have a picnic with your farmer's market fruit, Suzy Cakes, donuts, or Jones on 3rd, you have to come to the old LA abandoned zoo and where I am right now. Here at the abandoned zoo, there is a whole area where you can sit on a lawn and have a picnic or at one of these tables here facing the caves in the zoo. The last time I was here, I was exploring hidden gems in LA. I did a whole video about it. You can check it out in the description below after this one. But what I discovered is that this is definitely one of them. This was a city-owned zoo in Los Angeles that opened in 1912 and closed in 1966 after several violations and animal abuse. And to this day, still has the ruins and cages and the ghosts of dead animals. Spooky, perfect place for a picnic. If this just picked up the sound of screaming, it's little kids playing in the lawn, not the animals, but people have reported hearing them at night. So don't come here at night. Stay here for a picnic in the daytime. It's dark and scary. Aside from picnicking, it is a great place to explore all of the ruins like this spot.
On this hike, you'll pass by some more animal cages and have great views of Glendale and Burbank. Every hike in Los Angeles is so unique, you just gotta find the right spots. A little later in the video, I'll show you a very overlooked hike and one of my favorite trails here in LA. And aside from hiking, you know what else locals love to do in LA? Walking around reservoirs. Back in Silver Lake, you have the amazing Silver Lake Reservoir. Reminds me of walking around the Central Park Reservoir when I lived in New York. Actually, I'll get to that in my next vlog. Gotta save some content. So for now, let's go to the Hollywood Reservoir. If you're in the Hollywood area and don't want to do the more popular Hollywood sign hike, because that one can be a little strenuous, Lake Hollywood Reservoir is a great option with a great view of the Hollywood sign from basically the entire way. And as a little secret, if you turn on Tahoe Drive at the Hollywood Estate sign, you can make a short climb up to a really nice hidden gem here in Los Angeles. And also get to walk alongside all these nice houses in the Hollywood Hills. Lake Hollywood Park offers amazing views of the Hollywood sign right off the Hollywood Reservoir. The locals love to hang out here, bring their dogs, have picnics, and just enjoy the sunshine. It's a birthday party going on back there. You can also park up here, but it offers a nice touch when you're walking the reservoir. Not far from where I am right now at Griffith Park is the amazing neighborhood of Pasadena. And one of my favorite things to do in the city is spending a day at the Huntington Gardens. I went here with my friend Michael in my recent Pasadena vlog and I was so charmed by all of the various gardens including the Japanese garden, Chinese garden, desert garden, and more. For just $25 for an adult ticket, you can spend literally all day here and such a good idea to feel like a local in LA. This whole place feels like a dream. It's so cool. I am fangirling over the cherry blossoms. I'm obsessed. Look how beautiful they are. Okay, and if you're a museum person and you want to avoid the more touristy museums like the Getty Center, Griffith Observatory, and LACMA, you need to come to La Brea Tar Pits and Museum, which is an active paleontological, oh, that's hard to say, research site here in the city. The tar pits have trapped LA plants and animals for tens of thousands of years. Inside the museum, you get a look at a world-class fossil collection, over 5 million fossils from the last ice age. And out here, you get to see it in action, with the tar pits still bubbling to this day. And as a local, even if you don't want to go in the museum, it's still a great place to go for a stroll around a very important scientific research site. They are still discovering new fossils to this day. Just do not climb the fence because you don't want to get stuck in tar. Although, fair warning, it kind of smells bad here. Okay, and I am hiking Los Leones Trail, located in the Pacific Palisades of West LA. And what I love about this hike is that it is not as crowded and touristy as some of the more popular hikes in Los Angeles, like Runyon Canyon and Griffith Observatory. And it's only about a mile up to see some of the greatest views of the city and the ocean. But don't let me fool you, it's still a good workout. Checkpoint one. How beautiful. Look at this. It's a super clear day, so you can see really far out into the city. You can see the Santa Monica Pier, all the way over to the Palos Verdes Peninsula, and of course, downtown LA, with very little smog. And again, it's so peaceful up here. There's no one around. And catch this, we have the ocean, all the way over to the snowy mountains. From surfing to skiing. So it was about 1.3 miles to get up here and about 550 feet of elevation. You can even continue up into the Santa Monica Mountains if you want or just turn around because this is a really great quick escape from the city. But don't tell anyone. If 
you prefer to go for a casual stroll with the ocean as your background, come a little south of Venice Beach to the beaches of the South Bay. You can walk the Strand, which is miles and miles of a coastal walking path and bike path if you prefer. They're both separate so you won't get run over by a bike and definitely a little safer than walking the bike path in Santa Monica. You'll also get to drool over all of the beachfront real estate which will make you want to move here as soon as possible. And you can walk all the way to Redondo Beach where we're headed next. Okay, and a can't miss spot and really charming place in Los Angeles. I am in the South Bay at Redondo Beach. The Redondo Beach Pier is probably the most unique pier in all of Los Angeles. It's windy here. Yes, Santa Monica, even with your roller coasters and carnival rides, you are not as cool. The Redondo Beach Pier is also nicknamed the Horseshoe Pier because it's shaped like a horseshoe and it's probably the only pier here where you can actually just loop around it. There are a lot of seafood restaurants here. It's where you can go kayaking or stand up paddle boarding. You can just rent one over here and go out in the bay and offers amazing views of the Pacific Ocean and you can often spot a sea lion just swimming below you. Okay, and if you follow my vlogs, you'll know I'm a big fan of skating at the beach. At my favorite place, The Strand, which is basically a coastal bike trail here in the South Bay of Los Angeles. If you wanna feel like a local, you can rent bikes here. Metro bikes. It is 175 every 30 minutes, which honestly, is very worth it. You'll get the most beautiful views of the ocean and the sunset with less crowds than Venice and Santa Monica. So once you park at Dockweiler State Beach off of Imperial Highway, you can walk right down from this path from the parking lot to the bikes. Now, since I'm a local, I have my own means of transportation, my electric skateboard, my favorite thing in the world. Dockweiler State Beach is right next to LAX basically so you have the planes flying by basically all the time it gets a little loud I'm actually headed a little north to show you an LA secret there's only one place in LA County you can do this and the locals love it The secret is, is that you can have beach bonfires at Dockweiler. Apparently you can't do that anywhere else in LA County. Just bring your own wood and sit by the fire and listen to the ocean. It gets really crowded in the summer, so make sure you come early to claim your fire pit and enjoy the night. It has been a beautiful ride as always on the Strand. While there is so much more to do here than Hollywood Boulevard, you know what my absolute favorite thing to do in LA as a local? Leaving LA. LA is surrounded by some of the most beautiful places in the country and I am all about the day trips. So in my next vlog, as a teaser, I am taking a day trip to where some of the most famous LA locals live and maybe the most famous family in the world. Can you guess where I am? Welcome to 